You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal glory be to your name, O God. You have forgiven endless, endless faults. We turn to you this evening in this assembly, aware of your gospel and of your grace and your love. We thank you for the experience we have of you. It is an experience that ensures that we are on the great path of faith. We thank you for those who have walked this way before us, especially in our tradition as Calvinist Methodists, those who have preached and taught, announced the faith and called others to believe. We thank you for them all, O Lord. And we thank you that this evening we may somehow stand on their shoulders. We glorify the fellowship of your church and particularly that fellowship which we have had here over these last few days. We thank you that we feel that we are truly a family and that there is a spiritual relationship between us and each other, a relationship which is not of blood, nor only of tradition, but that is a relationship through the Holy Spirit. And forgive that we are sometimes unworthy of that relationship. Forgive that we at times um, take this gospel for granted. Bring us closer to you and convince us anew of the great truth of your coming in Jesus Christ. You who hear our prayer, it is to you that all flesh comes. We pray this evening, O oh Lord, and we know that your church, uh, particularly in our country and our culture, longs and uh, for a, a for new life. Forgive us that we have been too often satisfied on old uh, wine and torn skins. Give us the conviction that you are a God who acts, that acts in our time, calling people to follow you and setting some up as help and support for each other. And as we pray, and as we give thanks, and as we confess our failing also, we bring before you also our prayers of intercession for the work of your uh, church and the mission of your people. Remember those who work, O oh Lord, in uh, church and chapel throughout our country, sometimes discouraged, sometimes feeling quite without vision, and nevertheless somehow holding to your truth and your gospel. Remember your people and remember those in our society who have not heard the news, those who do not know you, those who know nothing of you, enlighten their minds, open their hearts, and give your church the means to reach them. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are finding life difficult, all who see the day as tiresome and the, lo and the night long. O oh Father, be with them and bless them. And if it is in accordance with your will, use us also to lighten the burden and to soothe the anguish. We pray for those who are sad or lonely, those who are worried, those who are anxious. You are the good doctor. 
we know that you are the great physician. Heal your people, strengthen your church. Let us all somehow come to believe afresh in the tremendous and marvelous power of your spirit. Your spirit is life. He, this is our prayer. Director of um, pilgrims, leaders, all of us into your hallways. Bless our interaction with one another and give us a missionary spirit through the power of your spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose is the resurrection and the life. Amen. We shall sing now the second hymn. The Magaria do them dear eyes, which need three the arm near the near. I can apply. Wondrous love, who may extol it. Well, my friends, to begin with this evening, can I thank you from the bottom of my heart, you as an assembly, for your trust, for your company, your support, and your prayers. 
as I come to the end of my term as a moderator. It has been quite a challenging two years period, quite difficult at times, but even so, this is the greatest honor of my life. And I feel for all my weaknesses, which you have had to put up with, that I can say with my hand on my heart that I have given 100% to this job. And for that reason, I should like to acknowledge all of the support and understanding of my pastorate, Salem and Bethel. It was a strain at times, juggling all the requirements of the moderator and the pastoral needs of the two churches. I think that you're going to lock your doors now because I'll be back in September and I shall be visiting you all. It is not all moderators who get to general secretaries in their term. Can I thank both? Can I thank you, Marion? Can I thank also, naturally, Nan as general secretary for her work, for her vision and her energy? Support her, please. Once I have gone, once I am a has-been, please support her. Make sure that you do not throw cold water on the passion and the flame that she clearly has in her soul. Can I thank you, staff of the office? Thank you for being able to cooperate in such a lovely way for your support and all your work. And I'm going to name someone who won't like this, but I'm going to say this. She has worked for us for 32 years. Thank you to Eleri Meluish. She has taken care and, and organized the moderator in the kindest way and most patient way. She has uh, organized my life, in fact. And I know now of uh, all Premier Inns in North Wales and the Borders area. And can I very humbly wish you all the best, uh, uh, the new moderator, as you come into the post. There's a story about Lawrence, one of the saints, who was a martyr for his faith. And he was roasted alive on a grill. And he made a joke of it, apparently. Turn me over. I'm done on this side. What was the reason that he was killed for his faith? Quite simply, the emperor asked that he exhibit all the treasures of the church for an inspection with the intention, of course, of taking them, stealing them. But silver and it was not silver and gold that Lawrence gathered together to please the emperor, but people, the lame, the ill, old and young, those who were respectable, the ones who were shameless, the odd and the eccentric. Here, said Lawrence to the emperor, these are the true treasures of the church. I would like, like Lawrence, humbly this evening to refer to you. Likewise, it is, a, has been a privilege over two years to meet you all, a number of you who have uh, uh, walked with me Oh, through the um, for the um, seeds of hope appeal, it was a great privilege to be able to present the check earlier today for one hundred and fifty thousand pounds to Christian Aid. Thank you for your contributions, all of you. It was wonderful to visit the churches of the connection and all of the other denominations to make new friends, to enjoy new experiences, to see all of the other treasures in other places. I would have to talk about Taiwan, which made an enormous impression on me. And being an ambassador on your behalf, 
It was an enormous privilege, and I thank you for that. I have learned an enormous amount, and thank you for all of the treasures which uh, who um, wave his banner in our communities. Some argued after the pandemic, yes, that it was a difficult time and a dark time, extremely so, but nevertheless, we must now, all of us, look ahead. I have given my thanks. I am now getting on to the message, which I think is part of the valedictory address. And this is the part of the message. We've had it read by Richard. Walk while you have the light. Walk while you have the light. There's a drive by doctors and everyone in the world of health for us to move more often to get us all to walk for the benefit of our health. I am very aware how much time I was sedentary as I went back and forth to the north, for example. Believe it or not, and I have said this over the years, believe it or not, I do go to the gym. Looks are always deceiving. And some of you know that I have mentioned, that Salomon and Bethel know that I mention very often the pearls of wisdom from the trainer, and my personal trainer, Ben, who comes from Essex, who before I started in the gym knew nothing of churches or religion, Christianity, but who now is doing a defil because of all this. And Ben, my trainer, would often say to me, and I would have to cancel some appointment to go and see him, and he would phone me and he would say very often, because he calls me Rev, so why are you this week, Rev? He's up in the north again? Yes, I said. I'm just telling you now, Rev. When you're on the A470, get out of the beacons and go for a walk, Rev. Not as easy as that, I said, when you have to, well, excuses, excuses. Some people count their steps. I have members, when you greet them, and say, rather than saying, hello, how are you, or how are things going? I'm 17,552 today. I am very well, thank you. How are you? And when uh, weather is fine early in the morning, sometimes before I was a moderator, I had a little more time, I would go for a walk. I live near the park in Cardiff, and sometimes if I felt quite uh, challenging and energetic, I would switch on uh, and I would go for a jog. I'm not saying I was running, look at the size of me, but I go for a bit of a jog. I go very early indeed in the morning to avoid seeing anyone I know. And I remember once I was about to get home. And you know how it is, well, how it is with me anyway. I am sweating and red all over. And there's a man sitting there on a bench with his dog. And he just uh, greets me as I get back to the house. All right, fella. Morning, I said. If I was by you, fella, I'd give up and stay at home. For those who know me, giving up and yielding is not an option. And being pessimistic is not really in my vocabulary either. Walk while you have the light. First of all, we can remember that first word, walk. Walk rather than tying up. Secondly, share rather than obstructing. And finally, uh, to wonder rather than shredding or destroying. So walk instead of tying up. Walking and moving are essentially important for us as the Church of Jesus Christ, rather than tying ourselves up and others up to some post uh, and limited to some specific place in 
in the Bible, we see all kinds of journeys. The ministry of the Lord Jesus, the journey from Bethlehem to Calvary to the garden. Think of all the travels of Paul in the early church and the Pharisees trying their best to bind Jesus and this new movement. If I was you, fella, I'd stay at home. Well, think, imagine, if the... Jim from Carmarthen. Oh, there we are, it's back. Our uh, forefathers would have stayed at home without moving at all. Journey after journey, Jesus is with us on the journey. Walk while you have the light. And thank him for that certainty, for that promise. You know, I feel sometimes that we bind the wrong things. We've had things in our business, that how we uh, tie up our money without using it, rather than moving the best things, rather than looking forward and walking ahead. And people inside the church like to tie us up, to sit back, and they want a, quite a quiet life, a, a bit of idleness, just a little break from everything. Oh, don't bother us at all. We are happy as we are. J.R.R. Tolkien, in his adventures of, in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, there's a piece where Gandalf is looking for company to go on an adventure, and he turns to Bilbo Baggins, and Gandalf says, I am looking for someone to share in an adventure that I'm arranging, and it's very difficult to find anyone. And Bilbo says, well, I should think so in these parts. We are plain quiet folk, and we have no use for adventures. Nasty, disturbing, uncomfortable things make you late for dinner. I can't think what anybody sees in them. Well, no, we cannot take the attitude of Bilbo Baggins. We have to not sit back. We have to set about moving, walking, walk. I referred this afternoon, of course, to the Presbyterian Church of Taiwan. Um, walking at the time of the White Terror, they moved, they marched, they protested for democracy. A number of people lost their lives. A good number were imprisoned. Walk for the light. I remember once when I was a young ministry minister in, uh, in the Dubby Valley, a rural area, and uh, as a farmer's son, I'm afraid of dogs, and I would go to all these farms in the Dubby Valley, and I would see some creature in the with one eye in the yard, all its um, teeth showing, barking, and that was the church treasurer. The dog was lovely. The dog was the one who had been tied up. The nicest thing on the farm, although I was afraid of dogs, that dog was lovely. Why do we tie up the best things? It is so very important for us to walk, for us to walk. I remember seeing someone running past me when I was jogging very slowly indeed in the park and they had a t-shirt on and the words said on the in the t-shirt it's a hill get over it and that's what's important for us to remember secondly to share instead of to uh, of, instead of obstructing to share our talents to share the gospel Oh, as a society, we have become very willing to uh, obstruct. This, uh, this gets me quite worked up. There's language used when talking about, about and describing uh, asylum seekers and, and refugees to our country, the way that our fellow humans are described in their deepest need in ugly terms. And it revolts me. And we, as a church, ought to be in the front of protesting and opposing this. There was a tweet when the government were bringing a bill through the House of Commons 
about refugees, the, the Carmelite nuns made an, a, a statement for the first time on Twitter. We have never made a political statement on here before, they said on Twitter, but this is a matter of truth and justice and human dignity. And there was a tension from a, a, a Tory politician. Note, when the nuns mobilize, it's time to think again. We hear all kinds of examples that we as a church can play such a positive role in our society. We'll share the gospel, share the good news, share his love. As the General Secretary of the Presbyterian Church of Taiwan said that we can evangelize in a holistic way, that is to say, taking care of the whole person. But then again, the church can obstruct. Almost, one, sometimes one, some churches have take pleasure in ensuring that there's something elitist about them. Unfortunately, over the, my two years as moderator, I've come across misogyny, homophobia, uh, prejudice, uh, racism within the church. And this uh, very much saddens me and gets me worked up. I am not a theologian or a philosopher, but I am a, a farm boy. It was my sister who got the uh, agricultural gene rather than me, but um, I know this. I remember how my sister and my father would handle the stock, the cattle and the sheep. If you were to treat your stock badly, not only is it cruel for the animals, but no one wants to buy and sell them. And in fact, you get a bad reputation in society and you become the topic of people's gossip and no one is very keen to come anywhere near your farm. It's important that we set about taking care of our sheep, the sheep we have around us, not only those sheep within the walls, but share rather than obstructing. I am tired of hearing the question, people asking me as a minister of the gospel, why does your church or the church hate me? Why does the church hate us? What kind of church do you belong to? Someone said to me once, is it when you need crash helmets? Well, share. Share the joy and his love and do all the knots that obstruct, that tie and keep us down. As Gwyn Thomas said, in, in the black depths, in the dark areas of our being, that we, many of us, uh, instinctively feel a kind of death at times. To, uh, a kind, sorry, a kind of passion to light candles. Walk while you have the light. And finally, we have to, to wonder rather than destroying. We've lost the skill to feel wonder. I remember when I was starting in ministry, I can say this now, I'm almost a former moderator. You can go back now and reminisce and things, you know. Well, I remember when I would go into a school, and this is a tremendous privilege, isn't it, to be invited into a school to take a service? And as I've been taught, you have to have visual things, props, as people in Salem call them. You have to have props to take to the children to express the story and to talk about Jesus and the Bible story. And I remember when I was in schools at the beginning, the children would be, oh, they would be uh, wondering at these things, um, seeing these things that you brought to convey the message of Jesus' love. Well, now I go into schools. These are well, it's Cardiff children or not, I don't know, they sit there. Uh, yeah, whatever. Bring it on. Bring it on. We've lost this skill of feeling wonder. And worse than that, we have be come to desire to destroy. There have been references to all of the climate problems there are. We've got to come to vandalizing and destroying his creation. But now there are people who vandalize and destroy things with no reason whatsoever. I live near the park, and last year in Cardiff, 
there was a great lot of um, trees that had been destroyed, not torn down, torn to pieces. Cemeteries now are destroyed, gravestones vandalized, broken. We live in an age where there is an element in our society that is very willing to to destroy rather than to feel wonder. Let us in Jesus Christ's church be brave to feel wonder at Christ, to feel wonder at the cross, to feel wonder at his love, to feel wonder at his grace and the sacrifice, because without this, we cannot be merciful, generous and, uh, and gracious. Now, some of you know, well, for many years, I was in Salem before the pandemic, doing a good deal of work with the homeless in Cardiff, with a shelter and so on. And that has taught me a lot. And one of the things that was said always by these homeless people to me was, when they were on the street the most, what they wanted them what well, they wanted most was that people would pay attention and talk to them and show them some dignity. And this is something that one still does. And I remember quite recently outside the supermarket in Cardiff, there was a gentleman there down on his luck and he looked very pitiful. And, you know, oh, he looked bad. His uh, clothes were a state. He himself was in a state. He was he smelt bad, but he had wounds on his hands, and and I began to speak to him, and I said, "Well, okay, I'm going in. What do you want? I'm going to buy a little bit of food. What would you want? What would you like?" He said, "Well, I'll have this and this and that and the other." Okay, I said. And normally, when one does that, they wait there. You come out and you give them a little package. But this man decided to follow me into the shop, just a step or so behind. And he came in, following me round. And I just uh, would say to him, would you like these sandwiches? Yes, nice, thank you. So we had a sandwich and we had crisps. We got a lot of chocolate and uh, t uh, some milk, some water. And I insisted on buying some savlon for these uh, saws on his hand and I had a little basket and we were queuing and he was still a step or so behind me. People were looking, of course, people were noticing, people were perhaps keeping their distance a bit. And there was quite a long queue. And of course, they began to open one or two other tills. And then there was a woman who shout, was shouting out, trying to work at who was who in the queue to go to other tills. And she pointed to me and said, and pointed at the man behind me, and she's just said, are you together? Like this. And you know, I felt dreadful, uh, dreadfully guilty because I sh if I just waited before answering, yes, 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 I'd be together. I said, I'm buying some food. And I felt guilty that I had taken a second before answering yes. I paid for his food. And he was very grateful indeed, and off he went. But you see, when we give thanks for our Saviour, I thought very often, well, Jesus would never have uh, hesitated. He would never have waited a second before answering that question. Are you together? He would have stood without any doubt with everyone. And we must remember that, that Christ is with us throughout the journey, walk while you have the light. And there's a story I'm very fond of telling uh, about the wartime, the Second World War in France. The soldiers had arrived, it was D-Day, they were working through France, and there was a group of soldiers here who had lost one of the group. Uh, it, it lost a comrade in arms, and before moving on, they wanted to ensure that their friend would be buried in a dignified manner. And they went to a local church in the night, and they knocked the door of the rectory, and the priest comes, and the priest says, well, I want to know, first of all, this body you have, 
was he baptized in the Catholic Church? Well, the soldiers didn't know. They had met uh, uh, only on D-Day. In fact, they didn't care either. They, well, the priest said, if you don't know, I can't bury him in the cemetery. It's a consecrated ground and so on. But the soldiers then in the night set about um, digging the grave just outside the fence of the cemetery. The next morning, before they had to leave on maneuvers and to move on, they wanted to say a little farewell again. They picked some wild flowers and they went down to put that on the grave. They couldn't find the grave. It was night when they had taken him and they knocked again at the, the rectory again and the priest came to the door and he looked dreadful. He was, he looked very tired and filthy. And what's the matter? Said these three to the priest, he said, well, I had a terrible uh, fit of conscience after you've been here last night. I've been up all night moving the fence to include the, the um, grave of your friend. It's time that we moved the fence. We never circled the wagons. We always widened the circle. May we be able to feel wonder at his love. It is so Im immensely important. This love cannot be fenced in. Uh, when traveling to the assembly in Ireland, in Belfast, John has heard this, but well, I was um, greeting the assembly. I got a taxi from the airport in Belfast to the hotel. And you know how taxi drivers are asking questions and friendly and chatting, asking what the nature of it all was and why I was there. And I confessed, well, this is the first time ever that I have been in Belfast. And although he was driving, he turned right round and was still still going and i have some members like that and they they drive better when they turn around but but this guy turned right round and asked me and couldn't believe it he was amazed where have you been he said where had i been but that's not the question was it the question tonight in the assembly is where are we going and with whom we have been called to be Christians, to become Christ-like and not to settle for being Christ fans or Christ admirers. We are called to walk. We are called to share. We have been called to feel wonder. Why? While you have the light, believe in the light, and then you will be children of the light. Amen. We shall now sing the third hymn. Low amid the myrtle standing, one who merits all my love.
before I honor the new moderator. We have greetings. They have come. My dear friends, um, on behalf of some church in Lixum, we would like to send our warmest congratulations and best wishes to Reverend Neiri Nowin as he is elected as moderator of the assembly. And Neirin has been a pastor for us in Bethlehem uh, and we send uh, uh, best wishes. This is your friends, Gronwy, William, Dewi, Nesta, and I'm sorry, I missed the last name. It's hard to pick up now. In the name and through the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Wales, I call you Reverend Aneiri Noen to sit in its chair, to moderate its activities and to lead it. And I present you to the grace and mercy of God, uh, the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and may he give his spirit to guide you in love and in wisdom. I present you with the Assembly Bible as a sign of your authority and your privilege. Will you please be seated? I now ask that Reverend Brian Matthews pray. Let us pray. Gracious God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we approach you with our prayer. We are thankful for Evan's work among us as moderator, for his devotion to duty, his willingness to go the extra mile, and his proclamation of the gospel among us. As he returns fully to his pastorate, continue to bless him and refresh him for the work to which he is called. As we install an iron to this post, we are thankful for his answer to your call to serve you in ministry and for his willingness to serve as our moderator in the coming period of time. Grant him wisdom and patience in all that he does. Guide him in his thinking and inspire him when called to proclaim your kingdom. Grant him serenity when busyness could well take over his life. Be his guide when he may be perplexed by the problems that modern life brings to the legal and financial matters that affect us. May your spirit lead him. May it be with him at all times and inspire him and grant that that Christ given persistence in all that he does. May he know and feel the support of us all as he undertakes his duties, and may he know your loving presence, supporting him at all times. As we all progress in our lives of faith, may we be fearless in our witness to the living Christ day by day, as we all live in a troubled world, as this part of your wider body of people, may we all be loyal servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, the babe of Bethlehem, the teacher of Galilee, the victim of the cross, and the one who was raised from the dead. And we all say unto him, be all glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brian. So, I think it's
Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for this tremendous privilege of being your moderator for the coming two years. I see you smiling now. I hope that you will be smiling through it all. There are so many connections here, but before I go any further, can I ask Marcus to come up to thank Evan? Well, the first thing I want to say, Mr. Moderator, uh, the great providence of heaven, who would have thought, with everything that has happened, that you would have come to our moderatorship, but you know that all your friends are here, who will support you, who will pray for you, and want you to, to well, wrestle with us too, as Evan has with all of us. Well, it's my pleasure this evening to thank Evan. It's not easy to, uh, it's easy to thank someone when we feel we've had something, and we have had something. Oh, my goodness. We have the message this evening. It doesn't surprise me, mind. Always you have been able to hit the nail on the head, and we have all this evening received something, and I hope that we will remember it, and more than that, we'll take action on it. We'll... Now, very quickly, it's easy for us old moderators to, well, to go on too much. And you'll come to know these people over the next two years and, and, and Irene, it's quite a lot of work. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is the word inclusive. How many, if you remember Evan's lecture in 2019, the inclusive church, and he has been inclusive in every way, not in the things that we worry about sometimes, but in the things where it shows the open love of our Lord for everyone. He has been inclusive in dealing with us all as a connection. He has been around us all. And despite those periods when he has been um, hurt, he has been inclusive. And I want us all to thank him for continuing to be inclusive. We have heard a good deal about the fact that he is a man who walks the extra mile. And it's remarkable, isn't it? I, I know how much help he's had from his, I don't know how much help he had from Ben and his trainer, but what is wonderful is that he, who would have, he turned up, who would have thought if, Someone of my natural inclination would never have done what he did, turn up in every presbytery and insist that the members of the church go to for a walk with him to raise money. We have seen the fruits of, of that money today, and we know it will be used wonderfully by Christian aid. But what's wonderful is this was the man who wanted to walk together with the members of the connection this is the man who, who walked the extra mile. And finally, but very importantly, this man can mimic, can't he? My goodness. He has mimicked so many people over these years. We all know about Ben now, don't we, the, the personal trainer? We all know about certain members of Salomon Canton as well. And we know about people who he has mimicked. Perhaps he mimics certain former moderators, but we won't get into that. But, but under the surface, oh my, don't think that this man is at all superficial because there is purpose, as you have heard, to all of the mimicking, to convey a message. And under it all, those of us who have the privilege of knowing Evan know 
that above there's one above all whom he wishes to imitate and you know who you have listened to him to to imitate his savior and wants us to hear from jesus more clearly through his uh, talent for mimicking some of us unworthy people and you would have heard him emphasize this evening the ineffable greatness of the love of our God. Oh, well, Evan, you know that I could go on, but I shan't. Uh, but I have said I hope enough to emphasize that our gratitude to you is enormous and every blessing. Thank you very much, Marcus. It's my privilege now to invite the General Secretary to present the medal to Evan. You can see that we've got a sort of Olympic team here at the front now. Um, and Evan now gets to join them. There we are. When I was called by Owen Richards to ask if I was prepared to put my name forward some months ago, uh, like everyone, I was a bit like this. I, but uh, got my, on my shoulder here, I had so many people with the link with Mizoram, uh, the link with Pontry de Ven and uh, Tom Maur and Willie John, where the revival was still simmering in the 60s, 70s. There was so much encouragement I had had from the colleges and the friends that I had made in the colleges, encouraging there was a cloud of witnesses around, and you cannot ignore that cloud of witnesses, ministers, uh, Sunday school teachers, people who keep the doors open in the chapels, people who bring the flowers in, people who clean, the people who are on the uh, phone wanting things on Sunday, the things in the ministry that you know about that keep everything taught. You cannot ignore that. But I have the privilege now of uh, being the moderator and Nan. It was supposed to be Nan here, not me. She was elected, but look where she is now. And, and the passion that she has in her heart, of course, for Jesus Christ and for the gospel of Jesus Christ and for the witness to Jesus Christ in the world. Well, Evan is right. We mustn't uh, must um, uh, in any way uh, imperil the be the blessing that there is in man's heart. And over these next few years, it, uh, I see the fruit of the blessing that we've had in the assembly that we've had. Uh, that God is certainly at work. We've heard yesterday, and that the witness is at work, and we have the privilege of the company of others from other denominations across the world where God is at work and there's no limit to the kingdom of God. It does not sleep and it does not wake the, the, the guardian of Israel. So thank you for your prayers and thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord and for your walking together uh, with us. And I look forward well, with anxiety, but I know that I have many friends too here, and I look forward to walking together with you in the next step on the journey. Normally on a Tuesday evening, I play football, so that's just a warning. I'm not going to walk to the presbyteries, I'm going to raise a football team in each presbytery.
and perhaps we will have a football game, women's and men's, um, as we move ahead into the next year. Well, thank you for this tremendous honour, and thank you for joining on Zoom. My brother has just seen his name on the list on the Zoom. He is in South Africa joining us here, and there are some from my local area joining as well. So thank you everywhere across the world. Thank you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing witness to the Lord in all parts of the world with the blessing of the Lord upon his work. Now, the next hymn, the final one we are to sing this evening, Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it, for by his power each tree and flower was planned and made. Jesus is Lord, the universe declares it, sun, moon and stars in heaven cry, Jesus is Lord. When Emir, my son who lives on Abadzi, was a little boy in San Sanan, he led this hymn, and I will not be forgiven for saying this, but in the final verse, he led the last one, said, "If you would you sing this, please? Yes, it, uh, yeah, it, it, this doesn't translate. It was a, a mistake made in the in the words of the Welsh version, so it wouldn't really be. Um, instead of conquering the grave, he knocked the grave.
Oh God our Father, send your Spirit among us. Come, O Holy Spirit, to revive your church. Send your Spirit, O God our Father, on throughout the whole world. May the whole world hear that Jesus is Lord. And let us share the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all at this hour and forever. Amen. <laughs>